This may be a big deal, depending on who you ask. It also may not be. So, full disclosure, this may not actually be a conversation worth having, but I wanted to talk about it either way, because we had ourselves a few tweets going out there and really amplifying this idea, with the Montreal Canadiens following their 3-2 loss against the Toronto Maple Leafs yesterday. And when it comes to one of the issues that you could bring up, it's been a pretty long while coming before we made a video about this, but after seeing this Grant McCagg tweet go viral in the way that it did, I wanted to talk about the power play. Because the tweet that everybody was talking about from last night talks about how you can see Yuri Slavkovsky starting to get frustrated with Mike Matheson. He just doesn't want to feed him on the power play, even though it's often his best option. Now, here's the thing. I get it, Grant McCagg has a reputation, a lot of people like to think about what he says, a lot of people like to disregard what he says, but this tweet had 23,000 views, a bunch of people retweeted it, and it ended up on my timeline, so I kind of started thinking about it a bit more, you know? Like, on the power play, Mike Matheson usually runs that top of the umbrella position, he usually commands the blue line area of the ice, he controls the flow. And this is a pretty common tactic, right? You have the one defenseman who is nimble, who's quick, who can make some good reads and passes. He'll be that guy on top. And the play usually runs through him. He may be every second pass, he may be every third pass, but he's always getting the puck. But when Mike Matheson very frequently decides to either send it to the left side and not send it over to Slavkovsky, it gets fans very upset, as highlighted by many of the replies to this Grant McCagg tweet. The first one from William says, It's frustrating, even just for us, seeing Matheson trying to do everything he can to not pass Slavkovsky the puck. I wish someone from the organization would tell him. Another reply here says, It would be fun to have a journalist ask him that, but of course, I'm not holding my breath on this. You then had yourselves other comments saying, We've been seeing this all year. He feeds Slavkovsky when he's the only option. He prefers Suzuki or Caulfield. Might be the right percentage play on Matheson's part, though. Because, another reply says, to be honest, half the time Matheson has passed at the Slavkovsky on the power play, it ends up as a turnover. And so, when it comes to the responses here, you're starting to see a bit of a conversation being brought up about this, and believe me, I say this wasn't a single isolated thing. Oh no, it's been like this the entire season. Ever since Slavkovsky was placed onto that first power play unit, it's been, hey, why does Mike Matheson never pass to him? Why does Matheson always control and send it over to the left to one of those right-handed guys instead? Even the quote tweets to this Grant McCagg tweet go out there and highlight similar things. I don't know how reliable Montreal Canadiens talk on Twitter is, but they tossed out this idea saying, I saw Slavkovsky talking to Matheson when the Habs were trying to tie the game late, and I can confirm to you guys that Slavkovsky looked furious about Matheson not feeding him on the power play. He was absolutely furious, and he's 100% right. We should get Matheson off of our power play. And this actually happened to be from a guy who was at the game himself. He posted a video of the Alex Newhook goal from his own perspective, and so being able to I don't know, I guess he could say verify, visually see what's going on here in front of his face. I mean, what reason do people have to go out there on the internet and lie about things, right? So, I don't know, you could take this at face value, you can think about it if you want, but I will say, when it comes to this idea, one of the things that I thought about right away when I started noticing the Mike Matheson lack of passes to Slavkovsky thing was... The situation with the Vancouver Canucks in 2017-2018. Now, I get it, Canadians fans, you don't want to hear about the Canucks, but bear with me for a second. In 2017-18, the Canucks had a really good young right shot rookie, and he was a beast. He was a prince charming, he scored 29 goals, his name was Brock Besser. And when Besser was a rookie, he was playing with the Sedins. That was the Sedins' final year, actually, so good to see that go down. Besser was playing with, like, Sam Gagne and Thomas Vanek sometimes. It was a pretty interesting mix of players on that Canucks team. But the one constant that everybody recognized about Besser's first season in Vancouver was that on the power play, where you'd have the Sedins, Alex Edler, Besser, and then somebody else once in a while rotating around there, usually, let's say, Vanek or Gagne, 
The problem with this unit was that Alex Edler would never, ever pass it to Brock Besser on the gosh darn power play, and it became such a point of contention that it became a meme on Twitter. People would talk about this on Reddit. Hey, Edler never passes to Besser. He always sends it back to Hanker Dank, which is not a bad move, all things considered, but still... Brock Besser was the hottest rookie the Canucks had had since Pavel Bure up to that point, and Canucks fans were just eagerly anticipating a pass to give him the one-time shot, which only came once in a blue moon. I don't know what it is about these veteran defensemen, man. Like, once in a while, you'll find a situation where a guy just straight up refuses to cooperate on the power play with these young dudes. Like... I get it, you don't want to turn it over, you don't want to put your team in a worse spot by giving the puck to a guy who has more likelihood of making a mistake, but that's where trust comes in, right? Maybe you could say, oh, you have to build it. You have to build that trust if you're a young guy in the NHL, right? You gotta earn your chops, you gotta work your way up the totem pole. You can say whatever you want, but at the end of the day, these players have been good. Slavkovsky has been good this year. He had two points last night, as did Matheson, but still, Brock Besser was a great player with Vancouver in 2017-18. But he didn't get any passes on the power play. Why was that? So, this certain situation doesn't really strike me as anything new. Like, it's happened before in my acknowledgement of watching hockey over the years, but... When it comes to the frustration from the fans, the frustration potentially from the players involved here, you have to start wondering, okay, at what point do the Canadians organization or coaching staff step in and say, hey, Mike, you gotta start passing it to Slavkovsky. Like, you are actively making choices that are predictable and not really helping us win because you're not utilizing all the options you have. When you are not passing it to one guy, it becomes painfully obvious to everybody watching at home, and probably to everybody on the ice too. So it becomes a little bit easier to be like, okay, well, we can kind of ignore Slavkovsky a little bit, just kind of commit everything to the other side, because all the pucks are going over there, Slavkovsky is not touching it. It's either that, or Matheson takes the shot and looks for the rebound, who really knows? So, like, there is a really interesting dynamic going on with the Montreal Canadiens and their power play. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not this is actually something worth thinking about, worth talking about, worth bringing up in a video. I just made an eight minute commentary to relay my experience of watching Brock Besser and Alex Edler exhibit the same thing. And I'll say that Brock Besser kind of turned out all right, all things considered. So for Yuri Slavkovsky, of course, this doesn't really spell any doom and gloom for his long-term development as an NHL player, but realistically, in the short term, when you're seeing a season of development and growth, you don't want to prohibit a guy from being able to exhibit power play opportunities, right? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, how do you feel about the Yuri Slavkovsky Mike Matheson drama. And I'm going to say drama because I feel like that's a very appropriate word to use here. Frustration, apparently, that Slavkovsky feels towards Matheson for not passing it to him on the power play. What are your thoughts about this entire thing? Is it really a big deal? Should I have made a video about this? Yes or no? I'm still feeling kind of crappy from yesterday and everything that I experienced personally, so I wanted to just get some thoughts out there on a ridiculous topic. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashros 99. And bye.